Wow, I love the sight of snowflakes. Aren't they the most mesmerizing thing? So today, I feel like talking all about snowflakes. Zoom in! When an extremely cold water droplet comes in contact with dust and freezes on it, ice crystals are formed. And when those crystals start sticking to each other and falling on the ground, Water vapor freezes and sticks on them, building new crystals. Therefore, snowflakes are formed during really low temperatures. <laughs> There's something absolutely remarkable about snowflakes. Now, see these two. What do you think is different? Hmm. Now, see this and this. So, no two snowflakes have the same structure. Yes, since every snowflake follows a different path while falling on the ground, they experience different atmospheric conditions and thus, they all tend to look different from each other. Some look like prisms, while some have a needle-like appearance, while some have the familiar icy pattern. Hmm, what do you think is the color of snow? White? Blue? <laughs> no, actually, snowflakes are colorless. That's because snowflakes are translucent, which means that light hardly passes through them and rather gets reflected. Hence, this creates a white-like appearance in the snowflakes. Since we are talking about appearances, I think I should tell you about the smallest snowflake. Take a guess, what could be its size? No, 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 ha! There you go! The smallest snowflake could be as small as a human hair. And it has a name too, the diamond dust crystals. They are super rare and appear in bitter cold winter. And the largest snowflake till date is... Aha! Uh -huh. You gotta wait for that till... Trivia time! The largest snowflake observed was 15 inches long, larger than these two pencils put together. Each winter in the US, at least one septillion ice crystals fall on land, that is, one zero 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 <gasps> Actually, it's 24 zeros. So, you enjoy the feel of snow snuggled up in your blanket with a big mug of hot chocolate. And don't forget to tune in next time for more fun facts. This is me zooming out. Hello? Hmm. Oh, Mr. Bear. Wondering why Mr. Bear isn't getting up? That's because he is not sleeping. He is hibernating. Come with me if you haven't heard of this word. Zoom in. When it's really cold, animals tend to go into deep sleep. Sometimes even for a couple of months. They curl up in a safe place and stay there until winter ends. They do this so that they can survive throughout the winter. When the weather is freezing cold and the food is scarce, this process is known as hibernation. Just when winter is round the corner, the animals eat enormous amounts of food and store fat to keep them alive while they are hibernating. Some animals collect and store food before hibernating. At times, during hibernation, these animals wake up to eat and again return to hibernation. Animals that hibernate are called hibernators. They are bats, snakes, bears, hedgehogs, 
ground squirrels ground hogs marmots hibernators like dark and quiet places some go underground or into caves wherever they feel safe from predators and attackers hey but how does one know whether an animal is sleeping or hibernating it's simple during this phase the hibernator's body temperature drops and its rate of breathing slows down which doesn't happen during sleep trivia time some animals go into a state of hibernation during summers too and that is called estivation when a bat hibernates its heart rate decreases so much that it might not take a breath for up to an hour so kids time for me to hibernate till i come up with something interesting for the next episode this is me zooming out tune in next time for more fun facts hello friends i hope you are doing good but as far as kitty and i are concerned as you can see we are shivering in the cold wait a minute that's actually a great topic to explore yes my friends so in today's episode let us speak into the falling temperature of our vibrating bodies and answer a chilly question why do we shiver zoom in imagine you wake up one cold morning suddenly your teeth begin to chatter and your body begins to shake uncontrollably or in other words you start to shiver shivering is a method through which the body tries to keep you warm when it's freezing cold out there it's part of a process called homeostasis which means that your body wants to keep your inner temperature about the same no matter how hot or cold it is outside and shivering helps make that happen but the shaky question is how your body manages to maintain the temperature through shivering you see the normal temperature for our body is about 98.6 degree fahrenheit or 37 degrees celsius but when the winter hits and the outside temperature drops our bodies begin to lose heat this is because heat always flows from a hot object to a cold object as a way of balancing out differences in temperature so when the body's heat starts to flow outside its inner temperature decreases so an important part of your brain called the hypothalamus located at the base of the brain near the pituitary gland gets activated its job is to regulate the body's temperature so when the hypothalamus detects the fallen temperature it sends a signal to our muscles to tighten and relax rapidly causing you to shiver and all that muscle movement generates enough heat to warm our body and helps it to maintain the normal temperature not only that there are other times when you might shiver too sometimes you'll shiver when you're excited or afraid when you feel these things your brain and nerves send out messages through your body that cause your muscles to get excited so you shiver trivia time did you know for some people stress or mental health factors can cause shivering yes this is due to a condition called psychogenic movement disorder which can affect any part of the body also if a person has not had food or water for a long time the level of glucose in their blood can drop this low blood sugar can cause shivering or shaking hope you enjoyed today's episode until next time it's me dr binox zooming out Oh. Never mind. Hello kids. 
Won't it be great if we could just pack our bags and keep flying from place to place? Hey, but you can't do that because you don't have wings like me! Oh, yes, you're right. But there's one major difference between you and my friends out there. And that is? You're a migratory bird, silly. Ooh, oops. Why didn't that strike me? Doesn't matter. You go take your flight and I'll tell my friends all about birds like you. Oh, I feel so special, Dr. Binox. <laughs> Come, friends. Let's know more about migratory birds. Zoom in. Migratory birds are those birds that travel from one place to another at regular intervals over long distances. And they migrate to escape the cold, harsh winter weather in search of food and a warm, cozy shelter. There are various types of migratory birds. Resident birds, pigeons and doves are good examples. These birds just don't migrate. They are able to find food and a warm shelter where they are staying. We might not travel a lot, Dr. Binox, but we do spread love all around from place to place. Short distant migrants. Robins are short distant migrants. As the name suggests, these birds move only a short distance from lower elevations to mountainside. Hey, but don't you mistake me for a nightingale. I might look like one, but I'm not, okay? Oh, my friends won't. They are very smart. Aren't you guys? Medium distant migrants. These birds travel over distances that cover several states. They don't really travel a lot, but not that they won't travel less. Isn't it, Mr. Blue Jay? Hmm, you seem to know me quite well, Dr. Binox. But there's one more secret about me. Wanna know? Sure, tell us. We are all waiting. Hmm, I'm quite mischievous, Dr. Binox, because I hunt more than I can eat. <laughs> Long distant migrants. These birds travel typically from United States and Canada to wintering grounds in Central and South America. The Arctic Tern is an example of long-distance migrants. And I am the record holder for covering the longest distance of 44,000 miles. Oh my, that's huge! Just to let you know, the circumference of the Earth is approximately 29,000 miles. So imagine how much these birds travel. Trivia time! Before migrating, many birds enter a state of hyperphagia, where the hormone levels compel them to drastically increase their body weight to store fat to use as energy while traveling. And some birds also have the ability to sense the Earth's magnetic field to help them navigate. So I need to travel now. Wait till I come back next. Tune in next time for more fun facts. This is me fly zooming out. Bye. Hey guys. Well, I know an iceberg became a bad omen for the Titanic. Still, despite all the hurdles, we need to preserve them more than before, little kitty. Why? Hmm, good question, my curious cat. Hey, friends, as we know, the gradual climate change is causing all the ice to melt. But have you ever wondered what will happen if it happens overnight? Well, in today's episode, let us consider this melting situation and answer an icy cold question. What if the ice melts away? Zoom in! Presently, 10% of the land area on Earth is covered with ice, including glaciers, ice caps, and the ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica. Usually, 
it would take hundreds to thousands of years for it all to melt away. But have you ever wondered what will happen if one day you wake up and found out that a drastic climate change has caused all the ice to melt? Let me tell you something, my friends. If it ever happens, it's not going to be a pleasant sight. Yes, as we know, about 10% of the Earth is covered with ice, which is around 5.8 million square miles of our planet. So, if all of it were to melt suddenly, the first thing we will notice is the rise in the global sea level that would go up to 230 feet high. This means more than half of the Statue of Liberty will be submerged into the water. Even worse, this steep rise in water level will partially drown all the continents, adversely affecting the cities located in the coastal region like those in Australia and Southern Asia, which will force up to 40% of the world's population out of their houses. And it's not just the Earth's surface that will be in turmoil, but something equally disastrous will occur below it as well. Yes, all the rising oceanic salty water will infiltrate groundwater reserves called aquifers, leading to its contamination and destruction. Because of this, we won't have any fresh water left to drink. Apart from all this, ocean currents will also change their course, affecting the lives of marine animals. With no time to evolve along with such a massive change in the sea, most aquatic and polar animals will eventually become extinct. Even those who manage to survive will have to migrate to a better place for habitation, decreasing marine food supply for humans. Not only that, but this change in the sea current will bring an extreme change in our climate as well. Yes, suddenly the dry regions might start to receive heavy rainfalls and the places that receive significant amounts of rain will turn into deserts, leading to a severe famine condition. And it's not just the water, land and climate that will be affected by the sudden melting of the ice, but it will negatively impact the air as well. Yes, as ice uses higher CO2 concentrations to melt, without the required amount of snow to consume it, carbon dioxide will accumulate in our atmosphere, causing difficulty in breathing for all living beings. Next, we will see that the flow of wind will change as well. You heard that right, my friends. With the absence of glaciers to deflect the sun rays, there might be an over-evaporation of water, leading to an increase in the formation of rain clouds, resulting in heavy pouring, which may cause massive floods around the globe. This change in the environment will also cause oceanic hurricanes, leading to even more floods. Because of this, even the most minor earthquakes will push the water so hard that it could cause a tsunami. All of this will result in a need for massive migration, which we might not be ready to tackle at any cost. So, the world we live in will eventually collapse completely. The good news is, this isn't happening as of now. But the bad news is, if we keep burning fossil fuels indefinitely, global warming will eventually melt all the ice and within 5,000 years, the Earth will have no ice and possibly no life on its surface. Think about it. Trivia time! Did you know the ice on the Greenland and Antarctica is made of fresh water? Yes, so when it melts, that's about 69% of the world's fresh water supply that's going straight into the oceans. 
Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Never mind.